this user here represents thousands of users. If it's 7 p.m. at night, people are getting home from work, they're having dinner, then by about eight o'clock, they start to settle in and they wanna watch some TV. So by the time eight o'clock hits, there's now more users that are using Netflix. Then by maybe 8.30, there's more users. And by 10 o'clock, there's five times the users that were currently accessing Netflix at 7 p.m. Now under the on-premise model, if more users are trying to use your system or your software, then you generally will need more servers. So in this example here, if this server was just on Netflix's on-premise data center, something like this would happen. All of the new users that were coming on at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock would all be hitting this one server. Now the server can only handle a certain amount of traffic. So if there's too many users trying to hit just one server, that server is going to crash. And when that server crashes, then nobody can access Netflix. So if you've ever heard the term or hear somebody say, oh, hey, that website crashed or there was too much traffic or the traffic was too heavy, it crashed the server. This is specifically what happened. There were too many people trying to hit one server, the server overloaded, it crashed, and then nobody else can access it. So this would be an example of something that would happen if you had a quick increase of users on an on-premise network or an on-premise server. This time we're gonna go through the same example, but this time an AWS example. So as users come on at 7.30, 8 o'clock, 9.30, AWS will automatically add another EC2 instance to handle those particular users. So then if by 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 11 o'clock, users double or triple, it will constantly keep up by adding new instances inside the VPC that all can talk to the database so all of the users can access an EC2 instance that isn't being overloaded. And all of those EC2 instances are talking to the database so that everybody can log in, access their account, and be served up the inventory catalog. So this would be a valid example of scalability. As users were coming online throughout the evening, we were able to scale up with more instances and handle the influx of traffic. Now, in terms of elasticity, what if as we rolled into 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 a.m., users were to drop off? Now there is nobody using instances four and five. And the great thing here is that Amazon Web Services, once those resources are no longer being used, can just remove them from your VPC and from your account, meaning that you are no longer paying for them. You are only paying for the use of those instances for the time that they were needed. So this would be a valid example of elasticity. So in this particular example, we clearly are highly available meaning that as users came on to use Netflix, new instances were provisioned, and so Netflix.com was always available. So there wasn't only one instance, and if that instance got overrun, then it would crash. Here, because of scalability and elasticity, Netflix.com is highly available to all the users that come to their site. Now, in terms of fault tolerance, let's look at it in this light. Let's say that currently, EC2 instance number three right here were for whatever reason to crash. So if this were to happen, all of these users that were using this EC2 instance would no longer be able to access Netflix. One of the great things about cloud computing and AWS is that if that instance actually crashes for whatever reason, and it doesn't have to crash because of too many users, there could be many other reasons why it would crash, it can just redirect these users over to this instance, assuming that this instance can handle double the load, which in most cases it probably could. Now, AWS will automatically take that instance, decommission it, remove it, and then automatically launch a new instance in its place. And then once that instance is back up and running, simply move those users back to that instance. So that is a simple example of fault tolerant. And the example that I just posed is one of the primary reasons why a site like Netflix and many companies now turn to the cloud and services like AWS.